a big event coming up, Tony, and I'm going to be part of it. Yes, Frank, we're here today to talk about the uh, Northern Ireland Road Safety Awards. Uh, it's now in its second year uh, and the closing date is coming up very quickly. So we're really in today just to do the final call for, for nominations and encourage members of the public and your listeners there to, to uh, get, get on board. And if anybody deserves to be recognised, to sort of um, now is the time to do it. Just remind me of some of the categories. Yeah, uh, Frank, it's, it's across things like uh, primary school, secondary school, uh, emergency services person. Uh, we've also got the public sector, voluntary sector, um, as well as things like motorcycle category and cycling so it really sort of covers the entire remit of people who are working in road safety and you're going to ha- you have the people who'll be nominated then they'll be shortlisted and a series of awards will be presented that's happening at a pretty special event yes uh, it was i mean the feedback last year from the event was fantastic uh, we went to the cultura manor um on the ultra folk and transport museum um, site and we're going back there again this year again it's on friday the 25th of november and that will take part as as uh, there'll be a road safety week takes, takes place that week and i think it's a good time to have it well, I have here with you uh, Rory, who is working, of course, with the Northern Ireland Fire and Rescue Service. And you received a, a special award, uh, Rory, in the, in the recent past. But you've also got personal experience of the trauma of losing a dear relative in a traffic, a traffic accident. And your very friends were called to, to the scene at the time. That's correct, Frank. Yes, I was very lucky to be uh, nominated and to receive the Lifetime Achievement Award last year, which was... Um, Amazing to even be honoured, you know, very humbling. I see it day in, day out uh, from the fire service, fire and rescue service point of view, but yes, um, from a personal point of view, I lost my sister in a road traffic collision and her boyfriend was also killed in the near area. Thankfully, I wasn't on that call, but my the crew that I had worked with, uh, they were called to it and it is harrowing for all families. So I've seen it from both sides of the the event, if you want to call it an event, but it is it's shocking. How does a family come to terms with it and it was only when you were coming through the door and I was thinking about examples not at a personal level in my own life but very close to me in terms of geography I could immediately think of two neighbours who tragically lost their lives on the road who lived either side of me back at home in Bourne in a very small parish on one country road two houses two addresses who'd both lost loved ones in in my lifetime on the roads it happens everywhere and it is so so sad it must be almost impossible for families to cope with that sort of knock on the door that news oh it's it's devastating and i mean let's say my tragedy my family tragedy happened in 2004 we still feel the effects of it you never get over it personally i don't think you ever get over it you sometimes numb to it but every time there's a tragedy it brings it all back it is devastating for families it wrecks families and you're quite right it happens throughout the province it doesn't dis- discriminate whatsoever um this time of year it's very hard for ourselves because it was in january the new year's day but when you think about it, there's somebody missing from that table the, the families it's not just the families the friends colleagues if you were to look at the numbers they're so large that people that one tragedy can affect never mind the amount that we've had on the roads and it just it keeps going how difficult is it for you to attend the scene of another road traffic collision where someone may be badly injured or even dead as a result of the impact? As you carry out your professional duty, how difficult is that for you? Well, luckily I'm able to sort of differentiate the personal and the professional. It does bring it back to me, um, but it's usually after the incident. You know, you, the training that the Fire and Rescue Service gives us and the support of your colleagues on the service gets us through it we train day in day out for this type of thing unfortunately you can't train for the consequences and what it's like to be actually at a collision um social media makes it harder for us because families are arriving if not before us sometimes on top of us and we have to deal with them um but also put the casualty first usually and hopefully we're getting there to help somebody that's still living um and if somebody has unfortunately become deceased we treat them with the same respect as we would with somebody that's still alive It's somebody's family, it's somebody's son, daughter, mother, father. Um, And we do our best, hopefully, that we make sure that those people get the best service that we can provide as a fire and rescue service. Had you not been on leave that day, you would have been called to the tragedy that involved your sister and her her boyfriend. Your friends knew who they were dealing with. Yes, and unfortunately, it has happened for all the emergency service, not just the fire and rescue service. We work in our own communities. Um, we do turn out and have turned out to collisions 
um, where there have been fatalities and they have been family members of the crew members. It happens, and um, unfortunately it will continue to happen. We deal with it as best we can. We're professional. Um, if there is somebody on the crew, we'll obviously try and get them away and get them the support they need. Would I still be in the job now? I don't know if I... I can't answer that question. Um, it was devastating to get that call. I know it was devastating for my crew. Um, we've since lost a colleague to road shift, a road collision that the crews attended that he worked with. Um, and it does. It hurts. I'll have to say it hurts, Frank. Um, but we get on with it. We're professional. You go around schools, you talk to school kids, you talk to new drivers, you you use your personal experience, the family loss and indeed your professional status to try and convince new young drivers not to speed, not to drink and drive, to concentrate on the road. All the things that we'd like to think that we all do and some of us fail miserably at doing. You're forever trying to get that message across. That's why, that's why you got the special award. Yes, well, I'm not the only one. There are a lot of people out there, Frank, doing this work that are unnoticed, um, unrecognised, and don't do it for the recognition. I talk to the young drivers, the new young drivers, and when you stand on a, uh, in a classroom or a hall and you're looking down at two or 300 people, um, sometimes a lot more, and you're thinking, these are going on the road, these young people are going on the road within the next year or two. But I also talk to all road users, you know, middle-aged, the elderly. We all have a responsibility to treat the roads with the respect that they deserve. Um, and to make sure that when we leave home in the morning, that we get home in the evening. So I'll go and talk to anybody. Um, the same problems, the speed, the inattention, the distraction driving. Yes, the 16 to 24 year olds are our target audience. But I'll talk to anybody if I can reduce one road death. And it's such a vital, vital message, Tony. And the ongoing initiatives that we have here on the radio, the ads on the TV, the discussions I have with the like of you or road safety councillors or, or whoever, it's constantly just drip feeding a little bit of information into the dashboards of cars as people drive at this moment. They take your foot off the pedal, have your seatbelt on, concentrate on what you're doing. And those who are going the extra mile and indeed getting the message across, these are the people that you'll be recognising at this award ceremony. Absolutely, Frank. I mean, I, and I think, you know, you, you've said there, it is a constant battle um, in road safety. So when you're in primary school, you're getting messages. In secondary school, you're getting messages when you learn to drive. Um, the police are doing, doing a lot of, act, uh, of activity. So there's so much going on, and it does. It, you'd always have to be reminded of it because it's very easy to get complacent again. I think on a positive note, I mean, I think we had Inspector Rosie Leach uh, here uh, about six weeks ago when we launched the awards, and there's been a lot of positives. I mean, the road deaths used to be maybe 10 years ago, it was 150 a year. You're down sort of like this in the 70s now, which is it's positive, it's mo- moving in the right direction. Is it one, one is two deaths too many? But I think they're, 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 the road safety people, uh, activists, should be encouraged that they're, they're, they're definitely uh, having, having um, a positive role. Okay, just remind us where the website is again. Yeah, uh, details uh, can be found at crashservices.com. Um, forward slash new uh, sorry NI Road Safety Awards and the closing date for entries is Friday the 28th of October at 5 o'clock Lovely job Tony thanks for coming in Rory uh, really interesting having you in the, the studio and there'll be schools uh, waiting for your, your visit because it's a vital message to get across thanks for your time thank, thank you, you